Runway seven, a good run. Uh, I'm going to put you on runway three six right. Runway three six right, clear to land on the red square. A right turn eastbound now. Start that right turn eastbound. You're going to one eight. Follow that east west road. Good job. Oh, you the man. Second aircraft, runway three six left. Take off. Right turn one five seven right below one thousand three hundred. Follow the road. Next runway two seven. Down on the side of the pit. March on that one eight point five. Turn the base, crank it around, crank it, crank it, crank it. Start that right turn for me right now. Crank it around, we're gonna aim for the orange dot and we're gonna keep it airborne to the green. White and black, straight, fast. Pass the guy ahead and off your left, then gear down, slow down. You're clear to land, that'll be off the blue dot on 1 8 right. Start your base turn now. White Cessna, turn right for the down one. You're flying to brown Cessna, wing up right base. Great Grumman, turn your base now, turn your base now, tight turn, tight turn all the way around to the green dot. Crank it, crank it, crank it. I need you to point at that orange dot. I need you to go right to the orange dot. Harder, harder, harder. Keep it airborne until you're on the green dot and set it down on the green dot with a right turn into the grass. Very good, Rock on Mark. Monitor Fallon now, 118.5. Welcome to the show. Clear to land, honor after the green dot, right turn into the grass. Follow the flagman, as for the note, and welcome to Oshkosh. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Flight Simulation Association. We are back with our webinar series, back from Flight Sim Expo. Nice to see a few of you in the chat chiming in and saying hello, and great to see everyone here with us today on the Pilot Edge YouTube channel as well. We are talking SimVenture 2023. This was a bit of a last-minute stream today that came about, but we are excited to be supporting SimVenture once again this year. So say a couple of hellos, and if you're watching and you'd like to join us on Flight Simulation Association. If you're watching on the chat, please feel free to say hello. Tell us where you're watching from. I'll say hi back to Roger from Kentucky, to Stephanie. Can't believe you're here with us, Stephanie. Thank you again so, so much for helping us volunteer throughout the weekend. For those who don't know, Stephanie, if you didn't see her at the show, was basically taking care of all of our volunteers, which is basically the most important job that we have. And for the first time, I think in maybe Flight Sim Expo history, I actually ate lunch all three days of the show courtesy of Stephanie taking good care of us. So nice to see you here with us, Stephanie. Howard watching from Toronto. Hello, Howard. I'm probably just down the street from you. Thanks for being on with us. Tim saying hello from Houston, location of FS Expo 2023. Michael from Ohio. Luke all the way from the UK. Nice to see you all here. Stephanie says she's blushing. Yeah, I, I believe that for about a second. Anyway, guys, it's been a, a pleasure to have and see all of you at Flight Sim Expo. I hope you guys all got home okay without too, too much drama. My trip home was pretty good. I had a bit of an unscheduled surprise. Our original airplane from Atlanta to Toronto unfortunately had a mechanical issue, so we had to switch out airplanes. They did it all things considered pretty quickly. I got home about two hours later than I was supposed to. Um, it wasn't so bad. They were saying there was a problem with the brakes, and I'm like, we should have been early if there was a brake problem, because like, we don't need brakes in the air anyway, but apparently they wanted to take an airplane that actually had brakes, so I guess, I guess that makes sense. Anyway, it's uh, great to see so many of you here. We haven't done one of our webinars for a couple months just with the show and everything else going on. So we are back and we are back into full swing, starting with today's content, talking all about uh, what is an exciting event coming up both in the sim world and in the real world of aviation, which is Sim Venture 2023. Now, if you're watching with us in the chat, especially if you're somebody who's perhaps new to the online air traffic control components, so you haven't used a network like Pilot Edge or VATSIM or IVAO, if you're new to human interactive ATC, do us a favor in the chat and type new to ATC. If anyone here, whether you're on the Pilot Edge YouTube channel, whether you're watching on FSA and you're in our Discord, if you're somebody who's not used a ton of online air traffic control networks before, type in new to ATC. And I'll keep an eye on both of the chats here and see who we have that might be new to this concept of online aviation. Uh, for everyone else, we are talking SimVenture 2023. This is our SimVenture 2023 notice review. And we are here with Kevin, the Director of Marketing and Special Projects at Pilot Edge. So Kevin, if you wouldn't mind, uh, say a quick hello for us and join us on the stream. Hey, Evan. Well, thanks for having us uh, on again to do the SimVenture 2023 notice review. Uh, it's really our favorite time of the year here, um, being uh, every July when it comes up and 
obviously just uh, just before Air Venture as well, but that's why we're here at Sim Venture. So uh, for those who might not be aware, Sim Venture is basically a practice run for Air Venture. It's uh, really geared toward real world pilots, but if you're not one of those, or if you're not planning to fly to Air Venture, this is still for you. Uh, we're happy to have anyone with a Sim come and experience the thrill of flying down the railroad tracks, rocking your wings, and oh yeah, it's the actual Oshkosh air traffic controllers. That's right, the ones who will be working Air Venture the very next week are working Sim Venture for all of us. So, uh, Evan, I'm going to dive into it. Unless you have anything else? Yeah, I was just going to just going to say a couple things and let people know uh, where they can find some of the material if that's okay, and then we sure. can dive in if Absolutely. that works for you. Uh, first of all, for those of you new to ATC, so Stephanie, Caesar, Bernie, and then looking over at the pilot edge chat here, Jose, Ryan, thank you guys for being on. And I'll just, especially for those of you who are new to this concept, I'll just do a couple of quick high level overviews for you. So first of all, we're talking about pilot edge, which is one of probably three main networks that deal with online air traffic control. So literally you are in your simulator, you're connected to the network, you see other pilots in their airplanes around you, and you can, using a headset like this one and a push to talk button, you tune in the frequency on the radio and you communicate with the controllers. And that's the thing that's available in some cases on some networks for free. and sort of on the pilot edge network it's a paid thing except if you've never used pilot edge before you get a five i think it's a five day free trial Kevin, five, or five, hour, hour, five, five hours hour of connectivity trial. within a yeah. two-week period five there we go five hours of free trial within a two-week period so that would be a perfect example of sim venture would be a great time to maybe try that out if you're familiar with flying your airplane and if you're prepared to do a little bit of work maybe not the best time if you're literally connecting to the network for the very first time and kevin you can probably chat a little bit more <laughs> about that um, but like kevin said sim venture is so first of all everyone hopefully knows what what air venture is so that's the oshkosh event i think it's probably kevin which hits the world's biggest fly-in oh absolutely yeah, so that that's air venture. That's a real world thing that happens. And in real life, people fly their airplanes into Oshkosh for the air show. And then four years ago, so in 2020, I think it is the first one we did, mm -hmm. Pilot Edge launched a thing called Sim Venture, which is a parallel or a mirror in the simulator world to what happens in real life. And the idea is to help prepare yourself, or as Kevin said, feel the thrill, feel the adventure. If you're not flying into Oshkosh, can't fly into Oshkosh, or even if you want to practice for the real thing, that's kind of what SimVenture is designed for. And Kevin, I, I, I'm going to say what I know, but if, if I'm making any mistakes here, please do let no, me know. No, that's all accurate. Good. So far, so good then. Uh, here's the important link that you would probably want to grab or copy or sh type right into your browser now, pilotedge.net slash simventure. That gives you all the information that we're going to cover today, including a very important document, which is the SimVenture notice that Kevin is going to be walking you all through. So there's the link, pilotedge.net slash simventure. Anthony, if you want to, I think you did already in the FSA Discord, but if you want to just post that link for people so they can just copy and paste it right into their browsers, so they can click on it and access it, you'll be able to download a lot of what we're going to walk through today and it'll just be a little easier for you if you can see it as we walk right through it. Uh, we're hosting today's presentation. My name is Evan. For those who don't know me, by the way, I'm the co-founder of Flight Simulation Association. We're the folks who put on Flight Sim Expo. And for those who haven't heard of us before, you want to learn more about how we help support the flight simulation community, you can visit our website over at flightsimassociation.com. I do need to make the very important announcement, disclosure, disclaimer that everything we're covering today, this is for home flight simulation purposes only. So we are not exactly talking about the real world fly-in. We are not telling you what to do at the real world Oshkosh Air Venture fly-in, but everything that we are going to talk about is designed to mirror what happens in real life. And of course, what you're going to see does involve real world Oshkosh controllers and the people that you're talking to on Pilot Edge are the real thing. So that's a really interesting and amazing thing that we're able to do here in the flight simulation world. If you've got questions today, we love questions. So Kevin's going to be taking questions both throughout the presentation as well as afterwards. If you have any questions and you're in the FSA Discord, pop them right into our webinar chat channel. If you're watching on the Flights and Association website, you can put your questions just in the chat that you see beside the video screen, or there's even an ask a question feature that you can use. And if you're watching us on the Pilot Edge YouTube channel, you can see me looking over here. That's where I have the chat for the Pilot Edge YouTube channel. And so if you post a question in there, I will pick 
pick that up. And Anthony's looking at everything as well. He'll be answering some questions in the chat and firing them to me so I can pass them on to Kevin. So I think that's uh, probably a good time to switch things over, Kevin. Hopefully I did a pretty good job of introducing things for you, but I'll leave you to talk a little bit more about things and I'll be here if people have any questions to fire those on to you. Uh, but for now, we'll uh, transition things over to your screen and you can walk us through it for our SimVetric 2023 notice review. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, we're going to dive right in. Um, as you notice, I uh, have the X-Plane version on the left. That's X-Plane 11 and 12. Um, and I have the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 version on the right. Now, we do have, we do still support Lockheed Martin's Prepared and Flight Simulator X. I'm not going to show that notice just because of my I don't have the, the uh, screen uh, size for that. But it's going to mirror these very similarly. And uh, the, the link that was mentioned earlier, piloteedge.net slash simventure, has all of these available for download, all three of them. Uh, just download the one that, that pertains to the sim, which you're going to be uh, using for sim venture. So no need to read through the others, but I'm going to go through these as they do parallel each other, just a little bit different as far as the setup and all that. Um, the disclaimer was very important that Evan gave. Uh, it's on the bottom of every single page. Uh, no FA or real world affiliation with this. Um, this is not to be used for real navigation, only to be used for the Pilot Edge Network um, for sim venture. So uh, we all these procedures are taken directly out of the actual air venture notice. Uh, however, for legal reasons, just please refer to that prior to operating at the actual air venture uh, in Oshkosh at the end of July. So diving in, um, I would uh, you're going to have to have the notice uh, available to you one way or another when you fly um, in SimVenture. So I would recommend you, depending on how, how you prefer, either print it out or a digital copy. A digital copy is nice because all this table of contents, everything is clickable. So you can just jump uh, right to certain spots of the notice throughout. Obviously, it is lengthy. You can see page 30 here. And there are also some links throughout that will jump as well. Um, but that's just one of the benefits of having a digital. But of, of course, if you're more the uh, the physical copy type, feel free to print this out. Um, the notice just begins with a few differences between AirVenture and SimVenture. They're very minor. Um, probably the biggest difference uh, being there's only VFR, no IFR permitted. Uh, you have to file a VFR flight plan. Um, that's just for our data tracking purposes. Um, so we can get some some really accurate numbers as to what we're doing here. Um, and so a VFR flight plan is required in order to connect within the, the uh, Oshkosh area on the Pilot Edge network. And you can read through some of those other um, differences as well. Uh, but that's especially important if you are going to be flying into air venture as well to just understand uh, the differences between the two events. Uh, they're relatively minor. So getting into some notes, this is especially important for first timers, understanding um, what some of these these terms are that we're, we're going to be discussing over the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes here. So um, Fisk Ripon, Endeavor, Puckaway Lake, all these different lakes, um, all these GPS waypoints. Um, these are really important for you to understand. Um, so you can you can familiarize yourself with this. Uh, and this is kind of how this briefing is going to go. I'm, I'm kind of outlining the notice and then with the intent that you will go back through and, and kind of dive into. I'm not going to be reading this word for word, uh, just some commentary behind some of these procedures. Uh, an overview of the event, um, just basically saying here that, you know, make sure you have ample time to fly in the event. I think that's the biggest um, the biggest point I can make here. Don't say, oh, you know, I, I've got 30 minutes. I'm going to try and squeeze in a quick approach. Um, this is going to be very realistic. There might be holding. Uh, we might have the arrivals push back 50 miles from the airport, um, just like the real air venture. So please try and carve out enough time. Uh, and, you know, if you do, if all you have is that 30 minutes, um, be, be prepared to just shut it down and disconnect if it doesn't work out. Um, you might be sent back out to the lake to resequence yourself. Uh, we'll get into some of that later. But point being, um, we you know we can't we can't afford for anyone to try to you know push themselves through and and ruin the event for other people. So we will be policing that as necessary. Um, just don't you know it's not a race. Um, this you'll have the most fun if you can carve out you know maybe an hour or two for yourself. Um, throughout the four days and about the 12 or 13 hours that we're running the event. Um, all that information available on pilotedge.net slash same venture for the actual uh, times. Um, flight simulator configurations, these are some of the pages that differ from notice to notice for each simulator. Um, so just make sure you have your sim configured to these specific settings outlined here. Uh, the reason being just so you're seeing the actual the, what needs to be seen. Um, every sim, uh, regardless of the sim you're using, you are going to have to download the custom scenery. It is free for all Pilot Edge users. Uh, as Evan mentioned, there is a free trial. If you have never used Pilot Edge before, that free trial is uh, this is a perfect window for you to get that trial because we are today 
we're within two weeks of the end of SimVenture, the final day. So if you sign up for your free trial today, you will have that full two week period. Um, now keep in mind, you can only use that for five hours of actual active network connectivity. So you don't wanna burn through that too quickly before SimVenture, uh, but you can still sign up today. That starts your two week clock, which is you're fine. You're within those 14 days. And then you'll have five hours of SimVenture time absolutely free, no strings attached, no credit card, nothing that you have to remember to cancel. Um, and again, so all that, uh, you'll be able to get the the Pilot Edge, um, I'm sorry, the scenery um, after doing that. So uh, pre-planning, pre, I'm sorry, pre-flight uh, and flight planning. Um, again, you must follow VFR flight plan. Like I mentioned before, that is one of the biggest differences here. Uh, it explains how to do that. You'll just do that on pilotedge.net slash flight plan. There will be a, um, a way for you to do that, to follow that VFR flight plan. Um, just before your flight. Now, only one of these is required per day unless you're changing your aircraft or call sign. So let me just kind of back up a little bit. The, the whole premise of the event, um, if you're familiar with AirVenture, obviously a bunch of airplanes come in and they land, they stay for a few days, then they all leave at the end of the show. Uh, one of the big differences about what you'll see with SimVenture is that there are constant takeoffs and landings. Um, there's there's really you know we expect people to do this and, and so uh we it, it, we we encourage people to land and depart five six seven eight times uh however much you want because your arrival will likely not be the same each time whether it's a different runway assignment whether it's a different dot or square that you're assigned to land um you're maybe you're rocking your wings at different times maybe you have to go around Whatever it might be, you're likely going to have different experiences every single time. So the more you fly, the more you participate, um, the more experience you're going to get for uh, preparing yourself to fly into air venture or just feel like you're actually flying air venture. Um, so having said that, you as long as you're not changing that call sign or aircraft, if you're just staying in the same blue and white Cessna 172, you know Zulu Delta. Um, you do not have to refile your flight plan for that day, all right? But if you want to change your type or your uh, your aircraft type or your call sign, you must refile. Um, check your radios before you depart. This is big. Uh, I've got here kind of a tongue in cheek. Imagine getting all the way to Oshkosh just to realize your radios don't work. Um, I mentioned this because uh, it, your, your journey to, to Oshkosh, I mean, it's going to be anywhere between several hours to 20 minutes, uh, depending on how where you depart. Um, and we'll get to that here in a minute as to where, where you can depart and, and how you actually are, are going to get there. Um, but check your radios. This, this outlines a self radio check available on the pilot edge network. This is nothing specific to SimVenture. This is just everyday pilot edge network. You can do a self radio check Tune both com one and com two to active on one, two, three, four, five. I have some examples down here of what that should look like based upon your, your, uh, radio stack. Very important, both COM1 and COM2. We see a lot of people just do one of those radios and say, oh, it's not working. Make sure they're both on. You're basically monitoring the exact same frequency. It should loop back uh, into your ear. This is something that is specific to Pilot Edge. You're not going to find that in the real world, but it's uh, what we deal with for technical support. All right, so departing for Oshkosh. Uh, this is going to apply to most people. Um, the standard everyday Pilot Edge coverage area is on this map outlined in yellow and green. Um, Obviously, Wisconsin is not in that area. So if you are one of the ones who are going to be making this very realistic and flying actually kind of cross country in your sim to get to Oshkosh, just know that your your um, IFR or your flight following, whatever you're doing, will terminate uh, in the central United States, and you'll be on your own after that. However, as you approach Oshkosh Airport, if you time it right and you're approaching during the event, of course, the procedures we're about to discuss will apply to you. Um, you are welcome to depart from anywhere, um, including Oshkosh, but this specific page is not for uh, Ford Oshkosh departures. We'll get to that. But you can depart from many of the small private airports or airstrips that are in the immediate Oshkosh vicinity. You can depart from Milwaukee, Appleton. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it is what you make it. And that really is SimVenture as, as a whole. Is If you want to have that awesome experience of flying from the West Coast all the way to AirVenture, like some people do, um, that's great. But if you just want to make it quick, uh, we'll talk about kind of some of the better airports uh, that you might want to consider there. Uh, so you're going to depart from wherever you'd like, and you're going to approach Fisk. So Fisk VFR arrival in Oshkosh. Uh, the Fisk arrival, this is the famous one. This one is the one over the railroad tracks. Um, keep in mind, the very first line, only for piston aircraft capable of comfortably maintaining 135 knots or less. So um, this is important. 
to know what your airplane can and can't do. Uh, now, comfortably maintaining. This does not mean that the stall horn is on um, when you have the airplane completely configured in a dirty config. Um, you know, it, something like the uh, the Baron. I've I've taken the Baron in to multiple sim ventures in the past. Um, you know, that's that's one gear down, flaps down. Um, you can uh, you can totally do these speeds. Um, so just just keep that in mind. Um, so if you for turbo props and jets. Um, that are unable to comfortably maintain that speed, they should fly the Warbird arrival. Um, checklist, approaching Oshkosh. Uh, and we'll get to the Warbird after that. Uh, listen to the ATIS on 125.9. That's going to be the ATIS that's going to tell you what runways are in use. That'll be important later on. We'll talk about that as you approach the airport. Uh, this should be done about 60 miles from Oshkosh, or if you depart within a 60 mile ring, uh, you can just pick that ATIS up right after departure. Uh, all these sub procedures are subject to change. Any light changes will be in the ATIS. Um, lights on. Th this and this all mirrors the actual air venture note on, by the way. So lights on. Um, this in improves uh, the visibility of your aircraft, most importantly to others, but also to the controllers. The controllers are seeing you from the ground. They need to be able to pick you up. And so having your lights on, all lights will make that easier. Uh, transponders on in a mode C setting, squawking 1200. Altimeter set to 2992. That is a SimVenture specific item there. We just need everyone on a level playing field uh, earlier in the configuration. Everyone needs to be clear skies and calm winds. That's also very important. No one's using real world weather here. You have to set your sim to VFR, clear skies, calm winds. Uh, so everyone's on a level playing field. And then you monitor FISC approach on 120.7. Um, so after you monitor FISC, um, you're going to hear FISC talking a million miles a minute, most likely, and just listen to them. They're going to be they're be saying a lot of the same thing over and over and over again, whether to an airplane or just a general broadcast message. And the whole point is so the, that you understand what they're saying. If you don't hear it the first time, don't necessarily ask them to say again, unless it's directed directly at you and you don't understand. But if it's just a general broadcast, just keep listening. They'll probably say it again. They'll be telling you what to do. Follow the railroad tracks. Um, and at, at 90 knots, 1800 feet, that's going to be the standard altitude and uh, speed for uh, most airplanes going down the railroad tracks. Now, if you cannot hold 90 and 1800, uh, you can use 135 knots in 2300 feet. So this is a high stream here. So there's a high stream and there's a low stream. Um, if But if you're able to comfortably hold 90 uh, knots, you need to do that. This is only, this 135 knots is only an exception for those who cannot comfortably hold 90. This is not an expressway. This is not the um, the tollway. You know, it, you need to make sure that you're playing by the rules here. So I don't want to see any Cessna 172s on this high stream at 135 knots. Um, do what you're, do what, do what your airplane can do. Um, so you're going to then pick out an aircraft of similar type uh, I'm sorry, similar speed and altitude to follow. Uh, remain at least a half mile in trail behind the airplane you're following. Do not overtake another aircraft. Do not S turn to follow an aircraft. Instead, break off the procedure and proceed back to the starting point. We'll talk about starting points in a second. All this is saying is that as you approach your starting point, again, we'll discuss those on the next page, um, to join the, that this published arrival, this FISC arrival, it's not a star, by the way, it's not a sitter or a star, it's not an IFR procedure. This is a published VFR procedure that goes into effect for Oshkosh week every year. Um, and as you approach that transition point, you need to have an airplane in sight, uh, ideally. I mean, if, if obviously if you're the first one or if you just kind of hit a gap, then you hit a gap. But if you see an airplane, you need to be at least a half mile behind them. Um, again, do not S turn, right? Because if you start S turning to gain that spacing, that's going to create a domino effect behind you and everyone's going to have to start S turning. It's going to all just accordion up, right? So if it's not going to work, break off the procedure and start over. That's why, like I said earlier, make sure you have plenty of time to fly this event. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to be favorable for anybody. So let's talk about transition points. So this is how you're going to join the FISC arrival. Uh, there are three, sort of four, um, transition points. Um, the farthest transition is Endeavor. Um, this is the uh, Endeavor Bridge or, or the town of Endeavor, uh, GPS point VPE, VPENV. Um, inside of that is Puckaway Lake, again, with a GPS point, Green Lake transition with a GPS point, and then Ripon. Ripon, oh, we'll talk about those. Um, so 
Typically, you'll hear as you as you tune that one two zero point seven um, in that general broadcast, you'll hear something about you know start the arrival at Green Lake. Uh, today we're using Green Lake, something in, to the effect of you know everyone proceed to Green Lake to join the Fisk arrival. That's what that broadcast is going to help you, and you're just going to monitor that, by the way. So after you get that ATIS, your next your next swap is over to one two zero point seven, and you're just going to listen and listen and listen and listen and keep listening until. It's your turn to uh, to rock your wings over Fisk, and we'll talk about that here a little later. Um, your transition points, again, the ways that you're going to join the Fisk arrival are all outlined here. Uh, the Green Lake transition is the closest one to Ripon. Basically, this is the one we're going to be using most often. Um, as things get busier, we will push back to Puckaway Lake, going back up here to my map. So here's Ripon, and then Fisk is going to be up here off the map. But Ripon, Green Lake... And then Puckaway Lake. So if it gets busy, we'll just keep pushing it back to Puckaway. And if it gets really busy, we'll push back to Endeavor. Um, in the real world, they've actually had to push about 15 miles outside of Endeavor um, in the past two years, and uh, specifically last year as well. Uh, it is, you know, it gets real busy out there. Now we haven't seen that kind of volume uh, at SimVenture. We did have uh, nearly 2,200 arrivals last year, though. So don't don't uh, think that this is is a joke. This, you know, we we get plenty of of operations at SimVenture. Um, however, 2,200 does not compare to the 10,000 they get for the actual event. So that's probably part of the reason they have to go out to Endeavor, but we have it on here just in case that, uh, it happens for us. Endeavor transition way out. I'm talking to almost 50 miles from Oshkosh. Again, make sure you have ample time to fly this event. Um, real quick, back to the half mile on trail. That's about, about half to one mile is about the distance where you can comfortably see an airplane in the sim. Uh, based upon our testing, based upon our years of experience doing sim venture. So we understand that it can be difficult to spot traffic in the sim. Um, and we'll discuss ways where you can help mitigate that a little bit later on. But just keep in mind, if you can barely see the airplane out in front of you, you're probably about a half mile. Um, during periods of low traffic, ATC might instruct airplanes to head direct Ripon. Again, that's that kind of fourth transition I discussed. So Ripon, uh, in the event that it's a, a low traffic scenario, they might just say, hey, just proceed inbound to Ripon. We're pretty slow right now. That'll just help shave some miles off your flight. All right. So once you're inbound over Ripon, so kind of getting your bearings, I'm going to use both notices here for a second. On the right side are our, our transition points that we just discussed. It hits Ripon and goes inbound from there, right? On the left side, we're picking up after Ripon, right? So here's Ripon. And we're going to pick up and head up the tracks from there. So that's where we are. So we've we've uh, hit our transition point. By the way, when you hit your transition point, you need to be at your speed and altitude. So either 90 knots uh, and 1,800 feet or 2,300 feet and 135 knots. At the time you hit your transition point, you're going to hold that all the way into Fisk and even likely beyond. We'll discuss that more here in a minute. Um, so you're inbound over Ripon. Here we are. Uh, regardless of your transition, maintain at least half mile on trail. Um, we just, we, that's basically what we just discussed there. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Hopefully you're already established at least that half mile on trail behind, um, behind the airplane in front of you and, and keep going. By the way, earlier in the, conf, um, configuration part of the notice, you need to have at least 20 frames per second working in your SIM. Uh, if you're not running with 20 frames a second, then you're probably noticing, uh, and, it, and maybe you don't know how to see your frames per second. If you are seeing if you're noticing that there's stuttering in your sim, uh, i.e. it is not smooth, um, you're probably less than 20 frames a second. That will cause problems for this event. It could result in you getting removed from the event. So I just tell you that so that you can kick your settings back accordingly, your graphic settings for this event, um, while still maintaining those minimums that were outlined in that um on that page earlier in the notice. So keep that in mind. Do not try to overload your computer, uh, especially if you're noticing some stuttering. We do ask for 20 frames per second or more because once you start getting beneath that, your your airspeed essentially or your ground speed essentially decreases, um, which will uh, obviously impact this flow when you're only a half mile in front and behind the airplanes that you're, that you're going over the tracks um, with. So uh, just, that was just a brief aside, but please make sure you have ample frame rates. So you're going to maintain the speed and altitude all the way, uh, utilize flaps if you need to. Um, and this is basically just saying the aircraft that are at 1800 feet do not have to sequence themselves at 2300. They are individual streams. So just, it, you can be directly beneath or directly above someone, uh, 500 feet here. You know, if you're at 1800 and you approach someone there at 2300, or it would actually be vice versa because they're going to be higher 2300. But if you're cruising at 2300, 135 knots, do not be afraid 
that you are overtaking airplanes beneath you. The streams are independent. Uh, sequence yourself single file with others um, in order to uh, uh, along the tracks. Basically, everything, even though you're on the arrival, you're really not being controlled yet. Um, nothing's going to happen until Fisk, and we'll get to that here in a minute. And Fisk is a, a small town, by the way, if you're unfamiliar. Um, Again, do not overtake, do not S-turn. This is just reiterating these very important points. If you're too close to the airplane in front of you, uh, be the bigger person, break off the approach, and circle back. Do not try to force yourself in, period. Uh, if we notice it, we will call you out. And if you're really causing a problem, we will remove you. Um, that's, by the way, just to show that graphically. So let's say you're over, over ripping here, you're cruising, you're cruising along. And for whatever reason, you're getting too close to the airplane in front of you, or maybe you just didn't see him before. Um, and now you're like, oh, shoot, we're, you know, 500 feet behind the airplane, you know, in front of me. Do not S turn. Do not slow down. Again, there could be airplanes behind you. Instead, break off the procedure. That means, you know, make a 180 degree turn to the left or right and go back to where you started that starting point and rejoin the procedure. That's what I mean by that. Okay. So I've got some helpful screenshots here. This is again where the notices differ from sim to sim because the sims are uh, the screenshots are sim specific. So this is really going to help you uh, no identify your visual reference points. Uh, approaching Ripon. So uh, let me go back here. Okay, remember Ripon's here. Um, Ripon is kind of the that that last fourth ish transition point, right uh, before kind of the heart of the railroad tracks leading into Fisk. So approaching Ripon, you should absolutely hundred percent be well sequenced here. Uh, half mile and trail, 100 um, at uh, either 2,300 or 1,800 feet, and on your speed for that altitude. Uh, so, if you're an X plane, it's going to look something like this. Look for these landmarks here, so you know. By the way, um, all this is visual uh, navigation. The GPS waypoints are in there, but they're only there for uh, reference, especially as you approach Ripon. Uh, which is where the railroad tracks begin. Again, I've got right here, right? Beginning of railroad tracks. I've got on the right side, beginning of railroad tracks. This is really where everything turns completely visual. You can still use those GPS waypoints for reference, but you need to be using your eyes as well. Um, and so you've got your, you've got some silos out here. You've got this, these bodies of water um, on your right. Again, ways to identify rip and ways to know, okay, here come the railroad tracks. There they are. I need to follow them, right? So follow the railroad tracks. Do not confuse it with the parallel road. Uh, as we scroll down, so uh, Ripon is, uh, gosh, I wish I knew. It's about 10 miles outside of Fisk. I don't have the exact number. It's about 10. So you got some time, especially if you're on the, the lower stream, which most of you will be at 1,800 feet, 90 knots. You got 10 miles. Um, so nothing's going to happen super fast, but it's going to be, your heart's going to be pumping because ATC is talking a million miles a minute. You're half mile and trail the airplane behind you. Maybe there's a high stream guy overtaking you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and you're, you're keeping your eyes on outside while also keeping them inside to make sure you're on speed and altitude. You're going to get about, uh, you're going to find this smokestack here, both sides, smokestack, um, and smokestack, depending on your sim. This is about three miles outside of Fisk. Now, why is this important? Uh, well, it's just letting you know, Hey, you're getting close to Fisk. Um, moving on to put that in more perspective in the lower right, you'll see this little grain farm on the left, um, grain, a little farm with a pond. Um, both of them have ponds, both, both Sims. That is a mile and a half outside of Fisk. Okay, now this one's really important. And the reason for this is because nothing is going to happen to you, most likely, 99% of the time, before you get to this point. Um, now, of course, you can have your VP FIS, your, uh, your Fisk um, uh, waypoint in your GPS to also know how far you are from Fisk. But again, you're going to be focusing on your speed and altitude and your visual reference points. So when you see this little farm with the pond, you need to, you it's important to know that you're only a half, one and a half miles from Fisk because this is about the time you really need to start listening up to ATC. Um, now, for those unfamiliar, and I wish I had a picture of it, that would have been a good reference. Um, the Fisk controllers are literally at Fisk. They're, they're not in the radar room like your typical approach control. Um, they're called Fisk approach control, but it is no approach control you've ever experienced in the past. Um, they are in in real world too. They are at Fisk on the ground um, under a kind of a camper trailer. It looks like um, under just an awning with a handheld radio. That is literally Fisk approach. Um, so why that's important is because they are literally looking at you with their eyeballs. They are not going to see you more than 
a half, one and a half miles from Fisk, nor do they really care about you. Even if they do see you with binoculars, they're not going to do anything with you till, till you get here. So once you overfly this little farm with the pond, you got to be listening up for, for your aircraft type and color, because that's how you're going to identify you. Um, I'll, I'll get to that here in a minute, kind of what you need to listen for. Um, so scrolling down again, over Fisk. Um, I'm sorry, not yet over Fisk. This is a half mile from Fisk. This is really about the, the prime point where they're going to start picking you up. The tracks, the railroad tracks, and the road splits. Do not follow the road. Now, th there will be a road to follow later, potentially, but this is not it. Um, continue up the railroad tracks. Continue up the railroad tracks here. This is a half mile from Fisk. Be listing and make sure you're continuing directly over the tracks. By the way, you can see the tracks. See all these bends in the tracks? That's how the controller is going to be able to tell if you're actually following the tracks or if you're following the GPS waypoints. Because if you're following the GPS waypoint, you're likely going to cut this corner. They're going to be able to see it because the other airplanes won't be cutting that corner. And they will call you out. They'll embarrass you. So don't be that person. Um, Let's see, where were we? Here we are. Um, so half mile outside of Fisk, follow the railroad tracks. You're still going up the railroad tracks. Fisk, here we are. Fisk approach control. Got it a little circled down here. Um, that is literally where they are. So you're going to get overhead this area. And at this point, Fisk approach will call out to you by likely your type and color. Uh, if they cannot get a hold of you by your type and color, they will try to see your end number um, and use that. So just but be listening if you're typing color. Um, you're going to, uh, so let's say we're a, a blue and white Skyhawk. They'll say uh, blue and white Skyhawk, uh, half mile southwest of Fisk, rock your wings. Um, three very key words here. So the way that, that Oshkosh Air Traffic Control works about 95% of the time is that you as a pilot are never going to touch that push to talk button. Uh, do not be uh, surprised if you go this entire event. I don't care if you make 20 landings without ever keying up that push to talk. Um, now, sometimes there might be a reason. Sometimes the controllers might ask you a question. If it's slow, they might even ask you where you're from. Um, but typically, you will keep that put that button off the push to talk. What this allows for is the controllers to continuously push to talk. Um, that's why they, the whole rock your wings thing is happens, because they are looking at you visually. You rock wings, and then... Uh, they will give you instructions basically so in my example you know blue white sky hawk or fisk rock your wings you will rock your wings meaning you you go left you go right now ensure it's a big enough rock that they can see it um this is a this is a legitimate thing even in the real world you know five or eight degrees might feel decent for you in the airplane especially if you're making it sharp but understand that you are a half mile from these for these controllers 1800 feet up in the air they're not going to necessarily pick up a five degree rock um, nor are they going to know, Hey, was that just a little bit of turbulence they hit or was that a wing rock? So I'm talking 15 to 20 degrees. Um, it's going to be, I don't want to say violent, but, um, give a good rock. I mean, it's, it, these guys are looking for that. It makes their job a lot easier. These guys and gals, when they know that you're actually rocking and not just maybe hitting some turbulence or you bump the yoke or something. So give a good rock without losing control of your airplane. Of course, um, you know, feel free to practice your wing rocks ahead of time too. Um, to make sure that they're going to be significant. So you're going to rock your wings. This allows them again to keep, they're going to stay keyed up the whole time. There might be a second of dead air while you do that. They'll say, hey, you know, I see that rock. Thanks for the rock, whatever. Now, this is the very important time to listen because they're going to give you a, a transition slash runway assignment to the runway. Um, they're going to tell you one of two things. Uh, number one is they'll tell you to continue up the railroad tracks, which do make a bend to the right here. I've got it highlighted in green. Um, so continue straight, and then you're just going to continue following railroad tracks. That's for runway nine or two seven, um, depending on the flow. You know, runway nine two seven, and or uh, the other options are going to tell you to turn right down Fisk Avenue. Now, this I'd say is the tougher of the two, just visually to pick up. Um, and here's why: notice I have not Fisk Avenue, not Fisk Avenue. There's this large four lane highway that uh, is very tempting to follow because it's nice and wide and, and easy to spot, but that's not Fisk. And here's how you know, um, th this is the best way to do it. You make your right turn. So let's say ATC says blue, white, Cessna, turn right, you know, follow Fisk Avenue, runway three, six. Um, you're going to start that right turn. And if you roll wings level and you are not on something between maybe an 85 and a 92 heading, if you are not almost due east, 
you're following the wrong road. So just keep that in mind. If you're not going east and you think you're and, and you are trying to follow Fisk Avenue, um, but you're showing maybe a 50 heading, you're doing it wrong. So uh, that's honestly, I don't want to scare people. Um, that that is the easiest way to know. And if if you are on that 50 heading and you think you're following it, just keep going right. Look for another road. It's an east west road. You'll hear it references the east west road as well. I don't take a lot of time to explain this part, but it's really the most critical part of the entire arrival. So uh, once you get your uh, once you get your transition, they might keep you on frequency or they might do it all at once. They might say follow Fisk, uh, follow the railroad tracks, runway 27, monitor tower 118.5. It's important to stay on Fisk approach until you get switched to the tower. At the same time, you have to use a little bit of common sense to where if you're approaching the airport, uh, you know, maybe you're one mile or two out of the Oshkosh airport and you're still on Fisk approach, it's probably time to go to the tower. They probably forgot. You know, they're working hundreds of airplanes very, very quickly. Uh, they might have just forgotten to switch you, but you are supposed to stay on Fisk until you switch to the tower. All right. Hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, rip into Fisk. So now let me go back to our diagram. Uh, so again, we're talking rip into Fisk, kind of what we just discussed. So we went over all of the uh, pictures before we went over, and this is all a kind of a textual um, briefing. So I'm not going to go too deep into this because I'm guessing we all pretty much already covered this single file directly over tracks, visually navigate, do not use GPS, listen very carefully. Uh, here are some examples of what they might call you, high wing Red Cessna. So they might even say highway instead of Cessna or instead of Skyhawk, right? So understand what you look like, which is a little bit different than the sim, right? Because generally, if you're flying an airplane for real, you're very uh, you're very familiar with the airplane. You maybe own it or you rent it uh, frequently. Um, you know, not a bad idea. Even if you want to take the full immersion, print out a picture of your airplane, take a screenshot of it. You know, right before you take off, hit you know Control P, print it off. Just have it on your desk. Uh, that way, you know, yeah, you know, I am the blue and white high wing or I am the blue and white Cessna or maybe I'm just the white Cessna. You know, it, it, they might not say blue, it, you know, if blue is not that prominent, whatever it might be. Right. So just understand that there are a lot of different ways to say the same airplane uh, when it comes to the, air, the controllers describing you. Talks about wing rocks here. Make sure it's significant. Um, uh, you do not have to read anything back. However, do not hesitate to key up if you have a question. Do not be afraid. Do not be intimidated. If you're unsure, you know, uh, was that, I'm sorry, was that, you know, Fisk Avenue or was that the railroad tracks? It might be hard to get a word in, but try and push because the last thing you want to do is guess and guess wrong. Um, and familiarize yourself with both transitions ahead of time. That, that is the Fisk and the, uh, uh, the Fisk Avenue transition, the East West Road and the railroad track transition. Uh, you don't want to be briefing. You don't want to be briefing any of this in the air. Um, I mean, that's just that's aviation in general. But just make sure you have a good idea. Um, got the frequencies there. Okay, I think we covered that. Now we go into the transitions themselves. Um, so you get the railroad track transition. We'll start there. From Fisk, continue over the rail tracks northeast bound to Oshkosh. Maintain 90 knots and 1800 feet. Faster type airplanes who approach Fisk on the high stream should begin descending at this point to avoid overtaking slower traffic. Um, ATC will then call out to you to join the pattern. So again, you have already switched to Oshkosh Tower on 18.5, and you will continue to cont follow up the rail follow the railroad tracks. Um, it, again, single file, half mile on trail, none of that changes. The high stream airplanes, it is the control fist controller's job to sequence those. So if you are on the high stream and you start descending, um, hopefully the controller will tell you when to start descent, but if they don't just start that descent, they should have cleared that airplane, that space out beneath you. you. There should not be a concern, obviously see and avoid, but there should not be a concern of descending onto someone else. Uh, but you do need to descend, to descend and slow to 90 knots. Um, use flaps and gear if necessary. So, uh, we, uh, we'll get to this, but ATC will call out to you um, to join the pattern once you get over the gravel pit. We'll talk about that here in a minute. The, the other transition is the Fisk Avenue transition. This is the one that goes to the east-west road. You're going to fly due east and um, approximately over Fisk Avenue uh, or between that and a quarter mile south of Fisk Avenue. So somewhere in there, somewhere in that range. Uh, honestly, if you're just directly overhead the road, no one's going to say anything to you. Um, Remain north of the microwave tower, though, so don't go too far south. There's a big microwave kind of radio tower down here. Uh, don't follow Highway 44. We we discussed that. Um, and the same thing for the high stream is uh, just start that descent. It should be clear beneath you, but see and avoid. 
Fisk holding, uh, I'm not going to go too far in this. We've yet to have to hold in our prior three sim ventures. But if you do get put in holding due to whatever, uh, we have the holding patterns here for you. All right. Um, we're going to put a pause on those piston discussions, um, and we will get back to approaching the runway here in a minute. But before we do that, we're going to talk about the turbine and warbird arrival, which is the arrival for uh, any small jets or turboprops. Um, I want to, well, well, we'll get to that in a minute here. But uh, so we'll just kind of, if you're a piston airplane pilot, just, you know, hang out with me for a second. Uh, and then we'll get back to what you're going to do as you approach the runways. Um, the first line here, don't, don't make this the first time that you've flown uh, a high performance airplane or a small jet. Um, you know, make sure you're not by not more. You can chew for this event. This is not the the event to to uh, experiment. Um, jets are limited to maximum takeoff weight of uh, eighteen thousand pounds or less. So this basically, there's a whole list here. You can click this link um, and it'll route you to a spreadsheet. You can find your airplane and see if it qualifies. Uh, basically, it's like a Lear thirty five and smaller. Um, but this is certainly all your phenoms, your vision jet, uh, that's all fair game, uh, eclipse jet. That's all good stuff too. Um, the city of Fond du Lac is the entry point for turbine warbird arrivals. The warbird arrival is very different than the Fisk arrival. Very, very different. Um, it, it, it has two way radio communication. So very, very different from the Fisk arrival, uh, monitor Oshkosh ATIS on one, two, five point nine. Okay. That's the same. Um, Avoid Fond du Lac County airspace, which is a small airport down just south of this big lake, Lake Winnebago, that's east of Oshkosh Airport. Avoid this airspace. Um, this airspace extends up to 3,300 feet MSL within a four-mile radius. Uh, once, so once you are north of that airspace, you can begin your descent. We'll get there in a minute. Um, aircraft weighing more than 12,500 pounds must advise ACC on initial contact. Just a simple advisory, that's all. Um, unlike the FISC VFR arrival, two ACOMs are required. Um, now, as you get over uh, to, as you get over Head Fond du Lac, you should make your first radio call. It's going to matter what runway's in use. So listen to the ATIS and figure that out. If three, six left and right are being used at all, it doesn't matter if it's departure arrivals, if three, six left and right are in use, you will make this report on 126.6. If you hear nothing about three, six left or right on the ATIS, you'll tune up on 18.5. This call will be something like, uh, Oshkosh Tower, black and white, uh, or black and red King Air, Fond du Lac. All right, they, they know what you're doing. You don't have to say we're inbound to land. They are well aware of what you're doing. Um, Oshkosh Tower, white TBM, Warbird Island. You don't have to tell them your altitude. It's very non-standard, right? But you just have to let them know you're out there. They will give you some sort of, um, they'll likely tell you to report Warbird Island. So, you know, black and white uh, King Air, report Warbird Island. And you can double click them. You can say, Roger, whatever you want to do. It's, it's a lot more standard, though, than the Fisk arrival as far as the comms go. Uh, proceed directly to the Fond du Lac. I'm sorry, proceed from Fond du Lac to Warbird Island. Again, there's a VPWAR is the waypoint there, the VFR waypoint. And uh, then descend to 2800. Um, so again, you got to get over Fond du Lac, which is 3300 and above. Uh, for I'm sorry, 3300 and below. So you need to be above 3300. And then you can just send out a 2800 once you're north of that airspace. Uh, get over the island. You're going to make another report. So you're going to uh, report Warbird Island, or most likely they will have told you that. It's not technically in the procedure, but you'll likely say, because they will have told you to report, you'll say something like Black and White King Air over, over Warbird Island. They'll tell you what to do. Um, they'll tell you, you know, clear to land on this dot, this runway, whatever. So it's kind of like a standard pattern entry from there. They might tell you to hold. Uh, if they do, that information is outlined here in the notice. Uh, let's see. Under all circumstances, avoid the VFR arrivals at area southwest of Oshkosh. So that's just basically saying, do not go west of Oshkosh Airport um, because there are a lot of Fisk arrival airplanes that we just discussed going in and out of there. Additionally, Oshkosh departures are restricted at or below 1,300 feet. So if you are landing, uh, let's say you're landing on 3-6, the three six departures will be coming off in this pattern down to the southeast at or below thirteen hundred. So you got to keep it a little bit high at least until you're established on that final. Um, all right, landing approach at Oshkosh. Now we're coming back to okay. I don't care if you're on the Warbird arrival or the Fisk arrival. This is going to pertain to everybody. 
Uh, there is a waiver. This is a realistic thing. Uh, there is a waiver that's been issued reducing arrival and departure separation sta standards, uh, essentially saying all airplanes um, minus jets can have just 3,000 feet separation on the runways. They don't have to be clear of the runway. Um, they just they just need to be have 3,000 feet between them, uh, which is essentially how far the dots are, more or less. Now, colored dots and squares, if you're unfamiliar, are painted on the runways. This is included in that scenery you will download prior to participating in SimVenture. Those dots and squares allow the controllers to tell you where, specifically where on the runway, they want you to put those wheels down. Um, this is very important, and it's important to understand the premise behind the dots and squares. This is not fly a standard approach to the runway and just float it. That is not the purpose of this. You need to, in your head, put the put your aiming point on those dots or squares, whatever one you've been assigned. Um, too often, pilots just do what what I said. They, they fly a standard approach to the numbers or the thousand footers, whatever your aiming point is, and then they just decide, okay, I'm just gonna add a little more power and float it nice and gently. No, you need to pretend like that aiming point, those thousand footers are are your dot and you need to put it down there. You know, it doesn't matter where the actual threshold of the runway is at that point. This just keeps airplanes going faster or longer. That's the entire purpose of these dots and squares. Uh, wing rock should only be executed when asked to rock. Don't just start rocking like crazy um, because that could confuse them as to, they might be confused if someone else is asking someone else to rock and, and things like that. Uh, be prepared for crazy maneuvers, essentially is all that says. Um, and Oh, runway 36 right and 18 left is actually a taxiway. Uh, if you notice, if you just bring up the airport diagram of Oshkosh, uh, there is no 36 right, 18 left. It is just a, it's a taxiway out there, but they turn it into a temporary runway, as do we. So that's why, that's how that's happening there. Uh, and that'll all, again, all be included in that scenery that you have to download, uh, free scenery. Arrivals and departures on separate frequencies. There might be an airplane that pulls out the on the runway uh, right in front of you when you're on a half mile final, and you're gonna, you know, in a normal situation, you'd say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, tower, what's happening here?" Arrivals and departures are on two different frequencies. Um, again, don't hit the airplane. You know, use your best uh, pilotage to make a smart decision, but don't be concerned if uh, if that depart if that controller working all the tight takeoffs, all those departures is trying to squeeze someone out just before you and you don't hear them. That's what's happening. Okay. Approaching the runway. Um, so we're going to talk about now, this is, I don't care if you came in on the Warbird. I don't care if you came in on the Fisk. You are now approaching the immediate airport environment and you, it is time to land. It is time for ATC to call out to you, maybe rock some wings, join the pattern and land. So uh, we have every runway possible here. Uh, runway 9, 2, 7, 3, 6, and 1, 8. Left and right for the 3, 6, 1, 8s. Um, it, pretty self-explanatory here, honestly. Um, you can ignore the IFR arrival note. This is These screenshots were taken directly from the actual notice from EAA, uh, which they obviously do have IFRs. We don't have any IFR ops uh, in SimVenture. So, but from Fisk, you can see they're coming from the southwest up the railroad tracks. Uh, for runway nine arrivals, there's a straight in, nice straight in. The warbirds are going to make a left down one and come in that way. Um, at the at the bottom of these, it has all of your runway turnoff instructions there. This is very, very important to review. You need to be familiar with this. This is something that once you have, um, you know, if I'm if runway nine is in use and I've been instructed by Fisk to follow the railroad tracks, so I know in my head, okay, I'm getting runway nine. Um, obviously, I need to switch frequencies. And I need to keep on my altitude and speed, but I'm going to brief myself. I should say rebrief because obviously you've already briefed yourself prior to the flight uh, on, okay, what can I expect here? So for instance, all aircraft are required to exit runway nine left into the grass. Um, do not use a taxiway that takes too much time. So you will literally turn off, you will angle off into the grass. Do not shoot for the hard surfaces. If your angle off happens to put you on a hard surface, great. But it, it doesn't matter. The grass rolls smooth that we need to get people off the runway as quickly as possible. Um, then look at this, taxi back for takeoff or taxi to parking. These are your two options when you land, right? What are you gonna do? If you wanna go to takeoff, you follow the flagman. All right, we'll talk about the flagman here in a minute. If you wanna taxi to parking, follow the flagman until you see signs for parking and then follow parking signs. So pretty self-explanatory there. Um, you just gotta just be, be aware of, of your surroundings there. Runway 27, um, you're gonna come down the railroad tracks up to the gravel pit um there's a big kind of pit um literally uh, it's a it's a quarry it's a gravel pit up there north of the airport 
you're going to keep your downwind inside the gravel pit, meaning you're not going to overfly the gravel pit. You're not going to fly past the gravel pit. You're going to turn just south of the gravel pit, begin that downwind, and then you're going to start your downwind. I'm sorry, you're going to start your descent at midfield. So you're going to start that on your own. Um, the controller might instruct you, but if you, you know, you, you should be starting that on your own if not if, if you haven't been instructed otherwise. The uh Warbird arrivals will be coming off the lake with a straight in for 2.7, potentially. And again, review all your runway exit instructions at the bottom there. Runway 18, right. Uh, we do not land 18 left. So if we're in a runway 18 config, this is what it's going to be. Um, you're actually going to kind of make a, a left 270 for the runway. You're going to follow Fisk Avenue, maintain that 1,800 feet. This is really important because departure is going to be shooting off a 18 left directly beneath you, restricted at 1,300 and below. So you need to maintain that altitude until you're on the downwind. At that point, um, you're going to turn base a beam, the blue dot. Actually, you want to stay inside the blue dot, really. Um, so you turn base at the control tower, and the blue dot is just beyond the control tower. You'll likely be issued the pink or yellow dots to land there. Um, again, review your runway exit procedures carefully. And runway 3.6. Pretty self-explanatory. You're whether you're on the Fisk, it's just kind of a left downwind. I'm sorry, a left base into the runway. If you're on the Warbird, it's kind of a right base into the runway. And review your runway exit procedures. All right, uh, we're getting through this. We're on to departures now. So one of the options is you depart from Oshkosh. Um, whether you are loading up uh, at the, the beginning of your day, uh, meaning you know you you want to just depart from Oshkosh maybe maybe it's the first thing you want to do in all of SimVenture or maybe you landed yesterday and now it's the next day remember we're doing SimVenture for four days straight uh for three to four hours a day and uh, maybe you landed yesterday you didn't have time to depart but today you want to depart so you pick up on page 23 here the notice and you are uh, departing from SimVenture so you load up at Oshkosh um make sure and this is all in the scenery it shouldn't really let you park and load up at somewhere where we don't want you to but just make sure you're either up here in what's called the north 40 or down here just west of tanks way papa these are the only two places we want you to begin your flights um, these are our designated parking areas so uh there's no ground control number one you're going to get the atus um that's uh that's reference somewhere in here um there we go Ash atus on 1259 that's going to tell you what runway is in use um That'll have that'll be good for situational awareness purposes, but reality is the flagmen are actually going to point you to where you need to go anyways. So if you follow the flagman, you're going to end up at the departure runway. But obviously, it's good to know what the departure runway is, um, just so you have that that information. Don't forget to follow your flight plan, by the way, uh, ahead of time. Uh, if taxi back to departure now, so again, this is if you're starting uh, fresh, you know, starting your flight at Oshkosh. If you're just taxiing back immediately for departure after landing, just follow the flagman to the departure runway. You will not enter one of these parking areas. Be ready to depart upon reaching the hold short line. So uh, do your run up on the ramp. You know, if you're starting your day, perform any sort of run up you want to do before you pull out of the parking area. Uh, if you need to work on something or need a bathroom break after you have landed and you're just planning to go right back out, just tax the parking. It's a quick pull off into parking. Do what you got to do. Hop back in the sim. You don't have to shut down. You don't have to disconnect. It'll be right there with you, you know, waiting for you to get back. Just get off the movement area and just, you know, do all your waiting and preparations in the parking area um, so that you can be ready for departure upon reaching the whole shoreline. As you approach, if you're departing 3-6 left or 1-8 left and right, you'll be on 18-9. You need to monitor 18-9. Um, you can do that on the whole taxi out for that matter. If we're departing on 27 or 9, you're going to be on monitor 12875. Again, during the whole taxi out, uh, and especially when you approach the runway. Do not check in with the tower. Uh, those controllers are down there on the ground. They know you're there. They will call you when you're number one in line and clear you for takeoff. Uh, same waiver. Um, they, they've got some waivers that they can line two airplanes up at the same time. You might be told to line up on the left half of the runway and the right half of the runway. Again, just to increase efficiency. Uh, rebacks are not required and refer to the next page for mandatory departure instructions, which are here. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's, it's copy and pasted from the notice of EAA uh, up here. Don't omit this. Maintain these runway specific instructions until clear of the Oshkosh class Delta defined here. Um, so you're going out about five miles before you can do anything. Um, the altitude is kind of irrelevant because you're going to be altitude restricted um, per these departure instructions. So uh, 
just refer to those three six left two seven nine you can find them all there helicopter ops i'm not going to go too far into this but uh, again same thing here don't fly a helicopter if you're unfamiliar with how to fly a helicopter um helicopters do not talk to atc during oshkosh we added these last year um a lot of people loved it uh, a lot of the helicopter users loved it so we're happy to have you all back this year just keep in mind that there's really no atc interaction with you you do still monitor the tower uh, all the instructions are here i'll let you read them for the small amount of people who are actually going to be doing this um you're only on the tower frequency in case they need to get a hold of you if they're talking to you then something weird is either happening either you've done something wrong or someone else is doing something wrong and it's putting you two in close proximity to each other uh but so hopefully they don't need to get a hold of you um by the way this is transient helicopter only do not attempt to fly any tour routes um there will be some pilot edge staff flying helicopter quote unquote tours around the grounds that is merely for added immersion that is not an invitation for people to do it themselves um there are procedures to get in and out of the little pioneer airport which is where the helicopters are based um again none of those procedures include talking to atc none of those procedures include flying anywhere outside of the shaded region you're going to just be in this little uh, uh i'm sorry inside the shaded region you're just gonna be inside this little white area and going west of that to get in and out all right talking about fond du lac fond du lac is a small usually untowered airport uh kfld that is located about 10 miles south southeast of oshkosh airport uh, for the one week a year for AirVenture, it is towered. Therefore, we tower it temporarily as well on Pilot Edge for SimVenture. All those procedures are here. Now, Fond du Lac works a lot more like a standard tower. Um, full two-way radio communication. Likely not going to do any wing, wing rocks um, unless something weird happens. It's it's really going to be your typical class Delta tower. So it is a temporary tower, though, so you're not going to see it towered if you look at something like Sky Vector or ForeFlight. But all those, all that information is here, including frequencies. These are temporary frequencies as well, uh, and what the uh, temporary definition of the class delta is. So, all that's available for you here. Um, seaplane base again, probably even less than helicopters, but we brought this in last year as well. Uh, all the, I'm not again, they don't talk to ATC, but they are within the delta. So there are some very important uh, things to note there. If you do want to take a seaplane in or out of uh, SimVenture. Uh, go for it. Just make sure you're very familiar with all these procedures ahead of time. All right, talk about the flagman. We're almost done. Thanks for bearing with me here. We're on page 28 of 30. Um, dynamic flagmen. These are very, very cool. Uh, we basically, to, to put it uh, simply, we have the ability to put dynamic flagmen wherever we want in order to direct the traffic flow around Air Venture. Uh, sorry, Sim Venture. Um, so they look like this, and they will tell you where to go. Um, some of them are baked in the scenery. Uh, those are not the dynamic ones, um, but most of them are dynamic, meaning you will only see them when you're connected at AirVenture, I'm sorry, during SimVenture um, hours because we turn them on and off. So this is what they look like, pretty self-explanatory. Turn left, go straight, turn right. Uh, again, you will follow them. They will always take you to the departure runway. Uh, if you want to go to, if you want to taxi to parking, after you land, follow them until you see the big yellow taxi signs, uh, I'm sorry, taxiway identifier signs for parking. Literally just a black letter on yellow sign like you'd see around the airport. It just says parking with an arrow. And that's what I'm, uh, that's, that's what those are referring to. Um, okay, just some tips down here, some moving map applications. So like I mentioned earlier, seeing traffic in SimVenture in your Sim can be challenging. Uh, I'd highly recommend that you utilize some sort of moving map uh, as a supple to supplement your eyeballs. And I've got some examples in here. They do vary from notice to notice, um, but just keep just take a look at those. There are some free options. There are some paid options uh, that will help you with your situational awareness as you join the tracks uh, around the Fisk arrival, as you approach Oshkosh, as you depart, all of the above. It'll just make your your experience better because you'll have a better idea of who's out there and it'll it'll make spotting that traffic a mile out ahead of you or a half mile uh easier when you have a, a bit of a situational awareness of where that traffic is you got some frequency asked questions at the bottom uh obviously it's an easy q a so i'm not gonna go into those um but uh, i do just want to thank everyone who has been involved with uh with the uh, with SimVenture, not only this year, but just in years past. Uh, couldn't do it without all of the, the help that we get uh, from the Pilot Edge community, as well as the staff members, and of course the pilots too. 
uh, Anthony Santanastazo for the great music in the promo video that you heard at the beginning of the uh, of the webinar today. And that is SimVenture. So we look forward to seeing you all out there. Oh, I did want to mention, sorry, real quick, and then I'm going to take some questions if we have them. Uh, I'm going to go to the Pilot Edge website here. Um, so PilotEdge.net, there's a big SimVenture banner on the, on the right side here. Uh, this is the main SimVenture page. This is being updated as we have more information and more in, uh, downloads. So we just put the notice out several days ago. The scenery will be the next thing to hit. Uh, but one thing I really want to let people know is that our prizes, the fun stuff. Look at this. Win real prizes. How, much, how often do you actually get to win something real um, with, uh, with flight simulation, right? So this is so exciting. Nearly uh, $3,000 worth of prizes um, is, uh, is what we have uh, coming for you here. So uh, I want to click this to, to outline our fly to win contest. Um, these are our very generous, wonderful sponsors who are donating prizes. Um, basically, the, the, all this is you land every time you land at Oshkosh, you have to be a fixed wing, by the way. This does not count for helicopters or seaplanes. Um, every time you land at Oshkosh, you get one entry. You uh, the capped at 15 entries. So we want to encourage people to fly this arrival as much as possible. It doesn't matter if you're on the Warbird or the Fisk uh, arrivals, that you will still get an entry every time you land. And again, like I said at the beginning, every arrival is likely going to be different in one way, shape, or form. And the more that you get, comfortable with each arrival and each runway and each dot, the safer you're going to be when you actually fly to Air Venture. So we want to encourage people to fly as much as you can. Uh, again, you're capped at 15 entries. So at the end of the event, we'll take uh, all the all the arrivals that we had and we'll just do random drawings for each prize that we have here. So a uh, lot of excitement there and we're, we're excited to give away a lot of nice prizes this year. Um, I think that's all I have, Evan, if we want to go to any questions that might have come through. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kevin, for the engaging presentation and for walking us through the procedures for SimVenture 2023. And for those of you who have questions, now would be a great time to post those. You can post them in the chat on our Discord. If you're watching on the Flight Sim Association website, you can post them right on our website. If you close out of the full screen view of the video, right beside is a chat. Just type your question right in there. There is also an Ask a Question feature that we have that sends me an email. And if you're watching on the Pilot Edge YouTube channel, you can also just post it right there in the chat. I'm going to cover off a couple questions, but just before I do that, I did want to point out that Howard, who's been chatting along with us here, is also the Howard behind the Forder Learn to Fly Twitch channel. And the Forder Learn to Fly Twitch channel is actually picking up SimVenture in a big way with a bunch of different events coming up over the next couple of days. I think on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, Howard, if I'm right, that are covering both SimVenture and AirVenture talking about actually flying some of these procedures that we've just been addressing today. So Howard, I wanted to give you the opportunity if you wanted to just drop a couple links into the stream chat for people who are watching maybe alongside the schedule. And if people are also have their own Twitch presence and you'd like to just talk about anything you're doing relating to SimVenture or AirVenture, and now's a good time maybe to throw, throw those in the chat. You know, it's really nice when you hear about how to do all this stuff, but if you actually see somebody else flying it, that can be even easier. Easier. So I definitely invite you, Howard, to do that and others if maybe they're watching and have the same thing. A couple questions coming in for you, Kevin, that I'd like to just take care of here. First of all, from Ron, and this has been a question we've got from a couple people, actually, is the, you know, we talked about the scenery is coming. Do you have any more information about the scenery and just speak to how that works and what role it plays in the event? Yeah, the scenery is is critical. Um, you will not have a favorable outcome to this event without the scenery. Um, specifically, for the maneuvering around Oshkosh itself, uh, but even more so, you know, the arrival with the dots on the runways, those are not standard to uh, any simulator uh, that's on the market. So you, know, you don't want to be approaching the airport and you're clear to land on the green dot and you don't see a green dot. Um, that That's not going to fly. If you, you know, if you come back and say, we didn't get the scenery, then you're going to get the boot. Um, again, we, you know, there's, there's too much at stake with this event. There are too many, when I say too many, I mean hundreds of users who are um, simultaneously flying, and for you know for one person to not have done their homework uh, and you know not have downloaded the scenery, um, it's going to just cause a lot more chaos than uh, than it's worth. So um, you know we're not trying to be super strict with that, but at the same time we we can't afford for for you know people who aren't going to brief themselves and set themselves up accordingly to. Um, 
you know, to kind of uh, alter the event in a negative fashion. Um, but the scenery is, it adds, uh, it makes the airport, I guess, what I say, show ready. Um, it adds hundreds of static displays. Uh, we have some great sponsors. Flight Sim Association is one of them with one of our tents. Yes, uh, or, our tent uh, is Several back. tents, That's actually. Great. Yes, absolutely. Like so uh, there, there, you'll see tents from all around the aviation industry, not just the flight sim uh, industry either, but uh, the aviation industry. Um, you know, uh, King Schools, which is one of our prize sponsors. They have a tent this year. Uh, you know, Martha, John and Martha King. Um, and some other, uh, you know, some other actual aviation uh you know, companies and entities as well. So it makes the airfield show ready. It's going to be a lot nicer on your eyeballs, uh, but it also will add some things like ripping and, and maybe some of those silos and, you know, all those screenshots in the notice are based upon what we expect you are seeing because you downloaded the scenery, if that makes sense. Uh, the scenery we can expect to see sometime this week uh, that's, uh, that's going to hit the, the pilotage.net slash simventure page and uh, the best way to know about when that drops is to follow Pilot Edge on social media. Uh, it's Facebook and Instagram at Pilot Edge ATC is the handle. Uh, if you're not on socials, you can get on the Pilot Edge Discord uh, by visiting, visiting pilotedge.net slash Discord, D A S C O R D. Um, and then you can expect a newsletter about it too to hit your email. So uh, as long as you're tuned in one way, shape, or form, you'll be able to know when that scenery hits. Perfect. And Howard's saying the scenery is awesome. Thousands of pilot tents under hundreds of airplanes on the field, just like the real thing. That's exactly <laughs> it. And Mike said the same thing uh, earlier on just about that scenery. So definitely a big part of the event, and you'll be able to download that when the time comes. A uh, question or maybe a bit of a comment from VR Flight Sim Junkie, who made the comment before we started to get into the helicopter portion of things, just made, wanted to make sure that we did touch on the helicopter arrivals. So that is a thing that people can do as part of this event, correct? Absolutely. Yes. If, if it is something that you want to do, and honestly, we encourage it. And that's because uh, it, it just, it helps the overall atmosphere of the event. You know, if we have a steady stream of transient helicopters going to and from Oshkosh, um, that's going to be really neat because they are just several hundred feet below that Fisk arrival stream. So it's going to be really cool for the helicopter pilots. And at the same time, the fixed wing pilots coming up the Fisk arrival because they're going to be seeing each other just several hundred feet apart. Uh, now, again, there's no ATC interaction, at least assuming everything's going well, there's no interaction with the, uh, the helicopters. Um, but, you know, it, it's a great way, especially if you've already done the fixed arrival several times to mix it up. And again, if you make sure you're proficient with flying a helicopter, but uh, we, we certainly welcome those. Perfect. And then just to wrap things up, if there's a couple of things, I'll bring your screen back up there so people can see just the Pilot Edge website. But if there's a couple of reminders or anything else that you just wanted to share as we wrap things up and get set for SimVenture 2023. Hi, Jeff, by the way. Thanks for saying your thanks for being on. Um, Kevin, if there's anything else you wanted to chat about or just sort of remind people of as we wrap up here, I'll leave that to you. Sure. I, I think, you know, for those who maybe join late, um, remember that SimVenture does require an active Pilot Edge membership. However, if you've never been a, a member in the past, you do have the opportunity to sign up for a free trial. And what's special about today is that we are exactly two weeks away from the final day of SimVenture. And so, uh, sorry, why that is why that's important is because the sim the trial is good for 14 days for two weeks uh, with five hours of connectivity time to the network within those two weeks. So, if you had signed up yesterday for the trial, then it doesn't matter if you you waited all the way to your 14th day to use all five hours, you wouldn't be able to connect uh, on the Sunday on the very last day of SimVenture. So you are we are now within that two week period. This is a great time to sign up for that trial. Um, but again, use it wisely unless you're you know willing to uh, uh, willing to pay for membership after the fact uh, because you only get five hours of connectivity time within that two weeks. Um, Aside from that, um, you know, make, make sure you're testing your sim ahead of time with your frame rates. Uh, of course, if you have a computer that screams, you should be just fine. But if you know, if your computer is a little on the older side, uh, we you know we encourage you to tweak your settings, like I said before, while staying in those minimum uh, those limitations of the minimums outlined in the notice. And just uh, continue to check back for the pilotedge.net slash simventure website, as well as social media for any updates uh, that are coming. But we're looking forward to a really great event this year. Again, can't stress enough. Uh, a thank you to all the uh, controllers who are volunteering to help us out. Uh, they, you know, they're not getting paid for this. They don't work for us. Uh, these are the actual Oshkosh controllers who will be working the show just a week later. 
uh, I always joke that it, I love the feedback when it says, man, that was really cool. You know, SimVenture is really cool. The controllers sounded like the real thing. And I just, well, I kind of, yeah, they, they, I would hope so because they are the real ones. Um, so it's a really, it's a really neat and unique uh, opportunity and a great relationship that we have with them to be able to have them come back every year to volunteer with us. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Kevin, for, again putting on that presentation to anthony in the chat and then others who've been chiming in good to see you mike howard and of course jeff turner from sky blue radio as well i appreciate the fact that the sim venture is a thing it's really neat to me like just in the sim world whenever anything that we do kind of meshes in with real world aviation and so this is the perfect example of that the fact that you have the real controllers involved and it's a bit of a practice session for them the fact that pilots are practicing this fly-in for then doing it in real life that's obviously what we're all about here at Flight Simulation Association, and that's one of the reasons why we've been happy to host this pilot briefing webinar for the past couple of years. So again, thanks to Anthony and Kevin for that. And for those of you who were chatting earlier saying you're new to online ATC, you're new to online flying, that's another area where we at FSA are really hoping to help bridge that gap for simmers who aren't using an air traffic control software or an air traffic control kind of network like Pilot Edge as part of your regular flying. I think it's a great way to just add some realism, some purpose, a little little bit of maybe more attention on what you're doing in the simulator and so this is just one of many ways that we're hoping to help you get over that leap make that leap into this piece of flying if it's not something that you've tried before and by the way we're not streamers here at Flight Sim Association. Our main thing is running Flight Sim Expo. The people who you see on Twitch and on YouTube on a regular basis, people like Porter Learn to Fly or Mustafa who've been chatting along with us, they're the people to really follow and watch if you are someone who wants to see this done. We might do a webinar maybe on FSA once a month. It's, it's kind of our average. And it's stuff like this, just getting developers or getting people who maybe don't have a regular online presence and giving them that platform to share messages like this one. But if you're looking to actually watch other flight simmers sim which is a really great way to get to learn something those are the people that you want to follow so there's a couple links that are available for you in the chat if you want to learn a little bit more and also on our website we have a list of the partners who we work with and some of those flight streamers who've been supporting us and linking back to their channel so you can discover them a little bit more and last but not least, coming up next on July the 14th is our next FSA webinar. I'm going to bring Phil on. You're going to actually see him on camera for a change. And we're going to talk more about Flight Sim Expo 2023. We're going to be walking through feedback that you've submitted in our survey, feedback that we've heard from developers, a couple points that were brought up in our developer conference on the Monday following the show, and chatting a little bit more about where next year's event might be. So please feel free to come join us for that. You can find the link to register on our website at flightsimassociation.com. And once again, thanks to Kevin, Anthony, and Pilot Edge for being part of today's conversation to the chat for some wonderful questions and comments over the course of our session today. And we're going to leave you with a quick video that talks a little bit more about how Oshkosh works in the real world. So here's our uh, real world, how does Oshkosh ATC work as we get set to wrap up. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you on the 14th. Right behind me, the most visible thing on property is the control tower. Let me tell you something, when you plug in up there, it is the most amazing feeling you can ever have as an air traffic controller. Let me tell you how this tower works. Upstairs, there are two teams of four controllers and the tower is split in half. That side of the tower up there, those windows, belong to the team that's responsible for 1836 and then the team that's over here for 927 is on this tower, this side of the tower. We have a rookie, typically two veterans and a team lead and each portion of the windows is one guy. So the person here talking on the radio is getting input from about five people, including all three of your team members and maybe a supervisor that's standing behind the team ensuring the safety. Here. Now explain to here me up. how you teach your team to work three six, which are these windows over here, go. Okay, working three six, we tell everybody to go to the little runway as much as we can because we wanna let airplanes depart off the big runway. If we have to go to the big, we space them down on the dots. We use the purple dot and the yellow dot on 3-6. That's right. So interestingly enough, you know, when we talked about how each person has a, a sec quadrant of from Fisk, you're already starting to be looked at. And then when you get to the base, and then when that's where the base lake spotter, and then sometimes the person knocking a radio, and then you as a team lead or me as a team lead would say, we're going to the big runway or we go to the skinny runway and then we start selecting dots. What also makes 3-6 challenging is the Warbird arrival. Yes. Very challenging. Warbird arrival is really kind of nutty. So sometimes you're crossing bases. Which... Warbirds come and they break overhead to the right and everything is going on opposite base to the left. That's right. And they have to cross out there on the base. It's Every... real, real fun. But that's 3-6. And what do you like about 2-7, Jeff? 
I love 2.7 because your downwind is right there where you can see it. You can pull your base in tight. You have this very tight control on your arrival. That's right. So we put the four, two spotters, one coming up the railroad tracks to the downwind. You have a guy on downwind, so you call it downwind spotter. So if you were to listen and go, high wind, start your downwind, that's the downwind spotter yelling to the communicator who's on frequency. He just simply repeats it because the communicator is responsible for the runway and picking the dots and figuring out there's also a base lake spotter. What I found difficult about 27 is um, the RNF final for 27 is really kind of, you know, that's driving straight in. The warbirds straight come up the lake. lake. Warbirds are on the left base. That's right. And then you Fisk got. Fisk is on the right downwind, right base. It it's can get really fun out there a mile from the runway as they turn It is absolutely final. complicated, but it's so, for the right individuals who are sick in the head like he and I, that was probably the most fun you'll ever have in air traffic. Now, I will tell you that we, 99% of the time, it's 2736 here, but on occasion it's 18, and that gets kind of nutty, but nine gets really, really Sucks. sporty. So, um, yeah, so if you're on <laughs> runway nine and Osh, rest assured, none of the controllers wearing pink shirts are enjoying that at We're not happy about no. that. It happens way too fast. And why is that? Because everybody's come up the rail track from Fisk and then the RNF straight in. So everybody's converging at about a mile final. And, and you lose them, right? About a quarter mile final, you lose them behind the trees. That's right. And you don't know what's happening. And right behind us is Fisk. Now, interesting enough, it's IFR. Take a look. There is not a thing no, going it's, around. It's solid. 500 foot overcast. That's right. So nobody's flying today. There's usually a team parked right there at the table between us. You see them right behind yeah, with the glasses. Just the it's all I have for hard that the tower grabs all this airspace and because there's nobody flying in here, so there's no reason anybody to be here. But if you've flown into Fisk before, you'll realize that the um, in the tower in a thing here now with ADSB, he's got an actual raw radar feed, so he sees exactly what the radar. That's your end number. He knows who you are. That's right. He knows everything. And also have a display that he puts in the trailer back here that has the ground radar, so he can see exactly what the ground is doing. The way this operates here is there's somebody uh, talking to Mike, and then there's a spotter. And what they do is they look up the line, which is right behind here. Let's spin around. We'll take a look. And basically, what you do is you'll hear them say, "Hey, uh, aircraft a half a mile south and, of this." And right there is a railroad track sign. And the bottom of the hill is a railroad track that everybody Everybody follows. That's right. So now you're looking up the chart up the railroad track. So you can see from toward Ripon if you look at the chart and see these two phone lines up here, those two right there. That is what we use for a spot to determine when you're half miles out of the fist. Right. So as the airplane comes up and they go between those two wires. I, you, I always teach the rookies to make sure that's about half a mile south of Fisk, rock your wings. It's a great location. And then what they'll do is they'll either spit you out to one direction or back up the, uh, continue up the railroad track for 27 or over to 3618. And also if you come out here and you're visiting Fisk, you can pop a lawn chair right over here and, and you can sit there and watch. It's probably one of the best kept secrets of Bring yourself Oshka. some spotted cow and a lawn chair mm -hmm. and it's a great afternoon. Yep. And right there is runway 27. Right there. Now right behind us, look there, right over Joel's bald head, is a call the Moo Cow. And the pink shirt control is up there. They're working the departures. So all the departures you see right there, you'll see them. The two guys up there, one is in communication with the tower. The other is actually talking to the pilots. But this is how it works. These guys clear for takeoff. Right off there, you'll see a couple in position. Now if there's somebody coming in to land, they are watching for the final. So if somebody's landed, they'll stop the little chain and put one for the guy will land and they'll start departing again. It's super intense. This is probably one of the best positions to work at Oshkosh, I can tell you right now, because the downwind, the final, and the warbirds all come from the approach end. And meanwhile, you're just talking departures. The spotter up there, and then the guy communicating, they work as a team. The spacing right here, the separation is only 1,500 feet which is not normal. We're under a waiver that allows us to shorten up the spacing. There's a couple guys hold short lines with wands. So when they would say controllers don't use wands, well, guess what? We have to learn to use the wand. And that's one of the things we always joke about when we were always controlling over here. Now we're here over at 3618. Hey, you, if you look, way, out if you look way over there, you'll see another moo cow. That's called flyby. Same kind of concept we talked about over there on the other side for 27. You have somebody up on the moo cow, who's in constant communication with the tower. That's probably the coolest the tower ever. The control tower That's right, this week. this week. You have a, somebody talking, and then you have somebody on the, on the trailer. Her name is Kathy tonight. She is amazing. Love Kathy. We'll talk about the arrival, but this is the runway right here. We went around. Moo Cow right there was the one that uh, put somebody in front of us. It happens. That's the safety features of Oshkosh. Is we're always backstopping, so if you misjudge something, there's a boatload of people there to help you out.